This tutorial is brought to you by one of the authors of Revising Professional Writing, now in its third edition. My students call me Dr. Kim. The publishers made this video available under a Creative Commons license. For more information, contact ParleyPress.com. Remember, you can use the pause button at any time, and if you see shadows or something weird on the screen, try changing your playback quality settings. Well, the view you see here includes everything you might learn about professional writing in my tutorials. There are others that help you understand content development, organization, style, and mechanics, as well as the rhetorical context that determines which content, organization, or style is going to be effective in a specific situation. Although your primary interest in this tutorial is the message itself, effective mechanics can only be judged by taking into account the writer's purpose and audience. If you haven't listened to the tutorials on rhetorical context yet, you should. This tutorial focuses on the mechanics, especially of punctuation, in professional writing. We'll be considering punctuation mostly from a letter of application for an internship. The quality in the video makes it impossible for you to read the text online. If you're a student using our book, your instructor should have a copy, or you can always download one at prosewrite.com. This letter was sent by a university student to someone at a company she's never met. I've revised the original letter to create two versions for instructional purposes. The audience for the letter is a finance manager named Mr. Crowley, who's hired interns from the student's university in the past. He's not an expert on the content in the letter and is moderately sensitive to or skeptical about it. That means the writer has to increase the reader's readiness to accept the letter's content by providing him with both informative and persuasive information. I've created this tutorial for native English speakers. Research shows that not all punctuation problems get the same level of negative attention from workplace readers. North American business people form highly negative opinions almost always based on comma splices and sentence fragments, so those two problems are the focus of this tutorial. When we speak, we signal boundaries with intonation, and when our audience misinterprets our meaning because they misperceive those boundaries, they can simply ask for clarification. But when we write, we signal boundaries only with punctuation and there's no chance for the audience to signal they've misunderstood and then get us to clarify. Recognizing sentence boundaries is at the root of the two most serious punctuation problems, comma splices and sentence fragments. Instead of repeating definitions of grammatical categories that have obviously been of little help to you up to this point, I'll provide an operational definition that you've probably not encountered before. Consider the example shown here. The writer has punctuated this passage with two periods, creating two word strings or sentences. Let's apply the first operational test. In English, any declarative sentence, you might have called this an independent clause in the past, can be transformed into a question. Sentence 1 from our example has been transformed into a question by adding a form of the word do. The company comptroller supplied us with estimates becomes, did the company comptroller supply us with estimates? Sentence two from our example is a problem, however. I don't see how to make it into a question. The red question marks here denote that the original word string, based on 2010 data, although punctuated as a sentence, it appears to be lacking some items needed to complete the question. Let's apply the second operational test to see if we get similar results. Declarative sentences can also be transformed into tag questions. Sentence one from our example shows how this works. A form of the word do with a negative and a pronoun that refers back to the subject of the original word string has been added to form the tag ending, didn't he or didn't she? Sentence two from our example is a problem again. We cannot add a tag ending to based on 2010 data. The red question marks again denote that the original word string is missing some of the items needed to determine which form of do we would use and which pronoun should be used in a tag ending. These two operational tests indicate that sentence one qualifies to be punctuated as a sentence with a period, but sentence two does not. In fact, it's not technically a sentence 
because it was punctuated as one, it's called a sentence fragment. Now that we have a way of recognizing sentence boundaries, we'll fix the punctuation problem on the next slide. As I said, the first serious punctuation problem I'll teach you to fix is the sentence fragment. The problem's created when a writer uses a period to mark a boundary that doesn't technically constitute a sentence, or if you prefer an independent clause. Here's the example from the previous slide. One way to fix the problem with this passage is to incorporate the sentence fragment into the preceding sentence. Note that the question test now identifies this string of words as a sentence. Once we've revised to include based on 2010 data in the previous sentence, the question test works. Did the company comptroller supply us with estimates based on 2010 data? Another way to fix the sentence fragment is to expand the fragment by supplying a missing subject and verb in this case. Note that the tag ending test now identifies this string of words as a sentence. So now that we've revised based on 2010 data, estimates included criteria listed above, now we can add, didn't they? Because now we have something to refer back to in the tag. With either fix, the writer avoids the negative attention earned from business readers who encounter a sentence fragment. While most professionals would ignore sentence fragments in informal contexts, research shows that those same readers make negative judgments about the writer of a document like a report or an application letter based on sentence fragments. The second serious punctuation problem I'll teach you to fix is the comma splice. This problem's created when a writer uses a comma instead of a period to mark a sentence boundary. A similar but less common problem is created when a writer uses no punctuation at all. In that case, you're dealing with a run-on sentence rather than a comma splice. See if you can find the comma splice in this passage from the application letter. It's fairly easy since the example includes just one comma in the passage. But let's try our operational test to see if they help us identify sentence boundaries in this case. I'm showing two versions of tag endings for the original sentence because we can't tell which one is right. It could be either didn't he or she, or it could be don't I. The fact that we have two choices means we've got two sentences in this passage. The revision fixes the problem by signaling the end of the first sentence before the word however. An alternative revision would be to signal the end of the first sentence, or independent clause, with a semicolon. This is the only other punctuation mark appropriate for signaling a sentence or independent clause boundary. Now it's time to check your understanding by revising the punctuation of a passage you haven't seen before. Pause the recording to look at this sentence from a memo to managers. If you tried to use the test for sentence boundaries, you should have recognized that you have two rather than one sentence in this case. That means the use of a comma to signal the boundary between the two is a problem. To fix the problem, the comma has been replaced by a period in the revised version. Let's do one more revision exercise before we move on. Pause the recording to review a passage from the letter of application for an internship. If you use the test for sentence boundaries, you should have recognized two word strings punctuated with periods that do not technically constitute sentences. That means we're dealing with sentence fragments. To fix the problem in the revision, a subject and verb were added and the two fragments were connected to create a complete sentence. To help you understand how to manage punctuation, I've been referring to a letter of application for an internship. The reader of that letter is more likely to be ready to accept the writer's request for an interview if the writer avoids things like comma splices and sentence fragments. Research has shown that business people make three types of judgments about the person who uses non-standard English in workplace documents. First, they judge that as a writer, the person is careless or uninformed. Second, they judge that as a professional, the person demonstrates faulty thinking or isn't a detail person or is poorly educated. And third, they judge that as an organizational representative,
the person would convey the wrong message to customers or in any legal proceedings. Any of those judgments will make it less likely that the writer of this letter will get an interview with the reader's organization. The bad news is that, like it or not, people judge you based on the mechanics of what you write. The good news is that only two punctuation problems are likely to trigger negative judgments from the vast majority of workplace readers. The goal of this tutorial was to make sure you know how to manage both of them.